If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Hey, in this episode, uh, we start off with a lot of fun. We told some good gym stories. About 30 oh, minutes of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, Got into our diets. Yeah. What so, we're currently eating. Yeah, we talked a little bit about what we're currently eating. I talk about the dude in the stall next to me at the bathroom making interesting sounds. Guy shaking off my wiener. There you go. Totally. Uh, that's uh, before we get into the questions, but then we get into the meat and potatoes. What a great episode. We talk about foods. That you almost always want to buy organic. And other foods that eh, it's not that big of a deal if you buy them non-organic. We also talk about the times we've had to actually fire clients. Yes, we've actually told it's clients happened. to fuck off. Uh, we also talk about what we would do if we weren't in the fitness industry. Maybe Adam talks about doing porn. <laughs> yeah. You got to listen to the episode to hear that part. I put in like maybe a second worth of information. And there. lastly... Uh, I know a lot of times we come across as anti-supplement, but we actually talk about some herbs uh, that you can take that may boost your testosterone, but it only works for certain kinds of people. Yeah. If you want to find out if that'll work for you, you got to listen towards the end of the episode. Sex binding something or other you're talking about. That's it. Also, this month, uh, the promotion is you can get two t-shirts for almost for free, and the way you do it is by enrolling... <laughs> In one so of, close, it's free. Almost one of free. our one of our bundles. Now, these are our most popular programs uh, to date, uh, and the reason why they're popular is because they're complete. And what I mean by complete is, it's not just one maps program that trains you for one particular type uh, of general adaptation, like maps anabolic, which is great for total overall raw strength, or maps performance, which is amazing for. Uh, full spectrum athletic performance or MAPS aesthetic, which is great if you want to really uh, sculpt your body from an aesthetic level, but it actually does all of them. And that's the RGB bundle. It's got all those programs. You follow them in order. It's nine months of exercise programming, or you can do the super bundle, which has those plus MAPS anywhere, our equipment free MAPS program, which is great as a bridge in between those. So what I mean by that is you do MAPS anabolic, you're in the gym, you're lifting heavy, you're about to move to mass performance. Before you do mass performance, do the body weight exercises of MAPS anywhere. The programming is brilliant. Then you move on to MAPS performance. Then between MAPS performance and MAPS aesthetic, you do MAPS anywhere again. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's about a year's worth of exercise programming. What's also included, that, included in that is MAPS Prime, which has a self-assessment tool and teaches you how to prime your workouts. That's the super duper bundle. Super duper awesome. Either one of those bundles, enroll in one of those, and you can get two t-shirts for basically for free. You find out about all this and get more information on all of them at mindpumpmedia.com. Is it me you're looking for? Come on, Justin. Whoa, dude. I, I, oh, we <laughs> I, wanted to see, I wanted to see if you could keep carrying I can't, it by dude. yourself. I always, my goal when I sing is to trigger you. Yeah. It's not to I, sing. I'll tell you what. I was fighting it inside. I knew you were. Yeah. You actually <laughs> looked at me like, <laughs> do it. I, like you're holding a poop. Yeah. I came in this morning singing, and Justin just fucking like clockwork. Yeah, takes yeah. over, and you're my trigger, and for sure. and blesses my ears with uh, just beauty. Is it me see? you're oh. looking for? He couldn't hold it I for that long. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> see, I can see it in your smile. Whoa, you're all I've ever wanted. Hello. Damn it, Adam. You, could you? What is that? Could you imagine is if that you could Adele? See no, what bro. What's Lionel wrong Richie. With you? What are you singing over there? That's Lionel Richie, yeah. dude. Yeah. No, I did not know that. God damn it. You disappointed me right now. Yeah. Well, I'm also not listening either. Could you? <laughs> how can you not listen to that? I, I'm even more disappointed. I told yeah. you I'm trying to finish a post. Hurt, you guys hurts my feelings. Fire up, fire up right away. It's like you're, it would be, yeah. It'd be like an angel coming down from heaven. It's right in front of you, and you're fucking like, yeah, it's all, oh, it's all beaming. I was on Facebook. Bright and yeah. you know, light I miss, emanating. I missed Jesus. Sorry. Yeah. Did, uh, Sorry. Oh, beautiful colors? Ah, oh, whatever. Yeah. I'm Could gonna you close my eyes? But let's be honest. Could you imagine? I was just thinking about this the other day. Yeah. I was like, why? 
does Adam suck so bad at singing? Like, why is he so terrible? And I know why now. Why is that? Can't Imagine if he's saying good. Can't have everything. Ooh. Exactly. Ooh. It would be, uh, well, first of all, be the trifecta. it's unfair. Someone would kill him because it's too yeah. much. Well, you know what I mean? He'd be in Hollywood for it, sure. F- oh, yeah. Hollywood. He'd yeah. be the emperor of the world. So, <laughs> so God in wow. his, in his, yeah. in had, his had to w- smite the, with the um, horrible voice. Yeah, plague. yeah. Exactly. God yeah. in his wisdom of gl- and glory said, yeah. look what I've created. Yeah. I got to do something to because this is not going to be this is not good <coughs> I have for humanity. To bring you down, fucked up singing. I think voice. it has something to do with uh, which is also it gives me this incredible radio voice. Is all the fl- <laughs> <laughs> is all the phlegm in my throat from fucking I allergies because yeah. <clears throat> I'm constantly clearing my throat and spitting. If I've been knows. trying to get more more of that that r- yeah. that huskiness to my voice. <laughs> And I've been smoking like four packs of cigarettes a day. It's not working. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it was ever that. I didn't smoke. You do that for years. Well, I know so. not for you. Yours is natural. I need I need to performance enhancing grizzly substances <laughs> for yeah. my. Oh, and I tried swallowing sandpaper. None of that mm. has affected me in a in a positive way. My voice still sounds. I still have that that Kermity. Mm, that essence. Right, no, it's nah. Yeah, that one's a little bit more. I like got. I hate you, dude. Because uh, now when I when I listen hello. to our now when I listen to our podcast, you can't help but hear that sound. Yeah, I'm just like fuck. <laughs> He's right. No, you know what though? In person, it's not. Thing. It's it's an exaggeration. It's a good thing. My my words are brilliant. Otherwise, it yeah. would you know. It, it is be a good that. thing. It's a good thing. You know what you're talking. I about. love self confidence. I don't think you I'll sound that way in person. Though. I think in person when people meet you, they they're surprised. Like, I, I don't think we have a lot of people who are like, oh my God, you do sound like Kermit when they meet you. No. Uh, Maybe you know should what? get Doug to put some voice effects. You know what, though? Yeah, why haven't you done I've that? heard yeah. uh, a lot of people with a Kermity sound. To, like, my girlfriend actually has a little bit of that that essence to her, her oh, voice. No, <laughs> she loves that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I've had, yeah, but sure. I'll tell you what, I've had several people who have met <clears throat> who look at me and go, Wow, it's so weird. You sound just like you do on the podcast. I'm like, obviously, no shit. So no, yeah. I've never had anybody say that. Like, you sound different in person. Yeah. Oh, really? I sound the same. My favorite was like that that one kid we met at, at Paleo FX, and uh, he's like, when when Adam was like saying some asshole comment to me, he's like, ah, fuck you, man. And he's like, whoa, that's like exactly what you'd say on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he just blew his mind. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's really us. You know what's fu- you know what one perception that's totally um, off with us is that people will meet us and they think we're these fucking raging party animals. Yeah. Like they, they, you know what I'm saying? Like they're like, hey man, we're yeah, gonna- this is all cool. Can you guys stop talking about business? Yeah. yeah. We're going to do all these drugs and drink and go crazy. And, and we're, we joke around like that. But in reality, all we do is sit around and yeah. go to bed early. We're kind of fuddy daddy. Well, yeah. I think, I think the most common thing I, I got was that it's exactly the same as the podcast. So oh. when you ran into us at Paleo, it was like it was like a, a moving or a walking podcast where we're just, which I think that's the formula and the magic of the show is that there is no preparation, <laughs> there is no not being ourselves. It's literally uh, the conversations that we feel this, the topics we feel like talking about for the day, and it's exactly mm-hmm. how we'd say it. We deliver it. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's yeah. no uh, intention or uh, you know purpose behind it. Like so. I think that's part of the magic. And when we meet somebody in person, I think they expect something different. You know, I think mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. think of this like a show where there's preparation and that we put, you want to turn your phone off, dude? Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> your mom was Ruining texting the me. flow. Dude, I- uh, Again? I, I, exactly. Yeah. I forgot to tell you guys. In About the, my mom? In the, no. I was joking, dude. Don't push wow. it because now I feel bad. Yeah. In, uh, in the Details. locker room- She called me this I have morning. another locker room story for you guys. Oh, Again? Excellent. Yeah. I love those. So the saga continues. Is this this is another this, sauna one or no, is this, oh, no, yeah. no, no, no. This is actually f- f- weird. Uh I was in the bathroom uh inside the one of the stalls doing my thing mm. and I heard taking your I heard, long ass shits. Uh, no, not yeah, I guess. Yeah. And um I heard a uh a, a, a reminiscent <clears throat> sound and I can't uh, duplicate it on the podcast because it would require me to pull my pants off. But it's the sound of uh, the you know the Chinese drums in in Karate Kid Two. You know what I'm talking about? Where they spin, yeah, and the, and the thing hits both sides. Yeah, 
And you know how when you were like a kid, you would do that with your wing. You'd you'd move your hips and it would it would that 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 both sides. Right? Yeah, but you just shake your hips and you do the. But it's a very distinct do the meat spin. It's, yeah, it's a very distinct sound. Like you guys would know if you heard it. Yeah. Of course. Oh, if yeah, I was yeah. in, if I was swap, in, swap, swap. yeah, if I was in the next room, you'd know exactly what that was. Like, that's a cock. Somebody, thigh. you're Somebody. doing the side to side, uh, you know, cock. Somebody slap. is whipping right. their dick next to you, bro. I heard that exact sound. No way. And there's no mistaking it. There's no other way you can make that sound. Well, was it? Like, fake it like, 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 like just like three times or was it like a while like it was cycles of it it was like, whack 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 and then whack 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 you can't see so you can't do I, it I know, i'm trying i would I'm literally trying. have to do what it right do now it like yeah. this like no it doesn't uh, even work uh, it's kind of close kinda? it, it yeah. doesn't work uh, because you don't oh, wow. have the same uh consistency in your hand when you're slapping you need a right. yeah you, you need, need a, a wiener you need yeah. a, exactly <laughs> you need to be a little bit softer yeah. so <laughs> i heard use, you're use my wiener real quick uh, and try that so i heard this i heard Adam the sound Glover. i heard the helicopter sound several times ne- right next to me i'm like is that is someone fucking you know doing the helicopter thing or whatever so i look <laughs> so i look down at the feet and the feet are... Were they jostling? No, the feet are facing the toilet. What? So they're obviously standing. You oh know what I mean? Like they're going to pee, which is the position you'd want to, you'd have to be in in order to do it. Like this, you'd have to stand. Was this a kid or an adult? It was a, it was a, it was a grown, grown ass man. So big feet. Weird. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm like, this is fucking weird. So I'm like, hmm. whatever. Um, we get out, I get out of the bathroom before the guy does. He walks out totally naked and he does a one two shake like he does it one two times boom boom so i'm like for sure he was doing that swap, shit. Swap. yeah for sure he was doing that shit in the stall next to me hmm. i don't know why i'm thinking he has a very strange shake off method you know uh, what i mean trying to get the the drips or whatever off whoa or i think he like or, hurricanes it off or he's just fucking hilarious that's funny you brought that up because i didn't bring this up but i have to now that you said this when we were at the movie theater right when we were come back from austin mm. Right before we flew out and we were waiting for our plane, we went and saw what the fuck did we see? You guys saw Guardians of the Galaxy. That's yeah. right. We saw, yeah. saw yeah. Alien. That's right. So as I'm coming out, there's a guy that's going the right, and this big dude, big like probably two fifty plus, tall dude, stand next to me. Which, what is the etiquette for peeing at the urinal? What are you? It? Are you? Uh, are you allowed? Don't talk to me. Well, don't. You, you have to, you have to hold to... your own dick. You can't do it for someone. Uh, else. Yeah. Okay. No. I that's know that's number one. I know that oh, much. Of the, okay. Yeah. But. You're, aren't you supposed to look Don't grab my straight ahead, right? If there's if there's men on each side, right? If you're shoulder to shoulder, like when the urinals are that close, where you're like shoulder, you're touching right. shoulders. Is there a divider? No, no divider. No divider. Oh, okay, yeah, there was no. There was three. I never use a neural. That's where it gets tricky. No divider. Yeah, well, that's where that. that's yeah. where I and I always feel like there's like when there's dividers and yeah. that's because if you look down, you're still seeing everybody's cock. Exactly. Yeah. So I feel like there's <laughs> there's very visible. urinal etiquette when there's no dividers on the urinals when you're standing shoulder to shoulder next to another man. Literally, you're I can feel his shoulder against mine. Yeah. And you do have oh. wide shoulders. <laughs> and, and yo, and I'm a wide guy. So and then imagine there's another wide guy next to me. So we're yeah. literally you know friction. whatever he does. I feel, you mm-hmm. know, so we're we're standing there and I'm looking straight ahead and yeah. this dude does one of the longest shake offs like Whoa. and as a kid I was taught like any any more than 3 times you're technically playing with it. Which so uh, that's, a female made that up. So I'm is that sure. right? Yeah. Cuz I don't know. I yeah, don't know. Who, she did cuz yeah. cuz a lot a lot of times you, you shake, need more than 3. Yeah, you can shake like 50 times. That, this is it's Well, that's that's as long as it's not gonna... That's how I felt he he did like okay, so maybe well, you and him read the same book because I don't know. He must have shook that thing fifty times. He probably not when I'm next to somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He probably he his wife probably you know which a lot of a lot of wives make this mistake they just do they'll go to the store and they'll be like honey I'm gonna buy you underwear and they come back with fucking white underwear and he doesn't want the <laughs> yellow pee pee stain you know what I mean he doesn't want who the, would do that he doesn't, really, he doesn't want the uh, yellow why does white underwear even exist seriously it's, it's the wrong kind you know you know what it was a deal it was at Costco and it was like this this. Uh, oh, crazy fifty percent off, and my wife's like, "Yeah, I just got you all this underwear." I'm like, "They're white." <laughs> <laughs> what in the fuck? Those, they're disposable. Use it yeah. once, and that's uh, it. Exactly. I'm yeah. like, dude, listen. You know, I'm a clean guy. You know, I, I pride myself in you know washing and and keeping care of myself. But they're white, dude. Yeah. It doesn't give you any room, like any drip, any you know accidental fart. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, some shit happens. You know, a deep butt scratch. Like, you can't hold me Nothing. to that. <laughs> yeah, deep butt, like some little itchy bunghole. You know, something. 
Yeah, like you're gonna have to do something, yeah. and like it leaves a little bit of a mark. You could, you could, man, you could get like every like. It's not bi- cool. You'd be like, hey, give me your underwear. I need a blood yeah. sample, a feces sample, and a pee sample. <clears throat> oh that, that's God. why it was way too revealing. It's like a petri dish. It was really easy to, re- to convert me in my early twenties over to the baby wipes. That's why I'm a huge fan of them. Oh my God, dude! Uh, yeah. It's like you, yeah. what's, what's you were so angry at Austin. Oh, man. <laughs> you were so mad at Austin was, because yeah. you didn't have your baby wipes. I it was. Your butt homeless I told is so dry. See, Katrina's normally rock solid. She normally like helps me pack and she normally takes care of my bathroom stuff <laughs> i mean this is the audience needs to know this was a 30 minute angry conversation you had with everybody <laughs> we were driving somewhere and for 30 minutes adam was like ah. really fucking angry he's yeah. ranting about why yeah. like what the fuck man i need wipes <laughs> i do you know? I yeah. do, and I don't understand why. What's people a have, good like replace? Can you do like? There is no replacement. You can't take yeah. the paper, no, wet no, it a little that bit. That does not oh, work. Put a little bit soap. Then you just leave like remnants yeah, all over the, there. Yeah, no, no, that does <laughs> not work. Just, and just I've tried the Dingleberry City. Yeah, you know? no, I've tried everything, bro. None of that stuff <laughs> works. Take down to the Dingleberry City. <laughs> You've got to have yeah. the baby wipes. If you don't have the baby wipes, it does not work. What if you do a little bit of like? I've tried. Like you do a little moisturizer. Tried it all. I don't think so. Tried it all. Everything from hanging my butt over a sink and splashing in there like. Oh my. Fuck you. Yeah. Hold on a second. <laughs> Wait That's a minute. so You've wrong. Done that? Where? You wash your butt in the sink? I did at your house because you didn't have baby wipes. <laughs> you wash your... God. Uh, I was like, why do I keep getting uh, pink eye? <laughs> <laughs> Every time I wash my face, yeah. I get pink eye. Explain oh, man. everything now, right? God oh, damn it. I've, uh, I mean, I've heard of peeing in the sink, but not washing your butt. I just thought, okay, so this guy does this. Kind of makes sense. You're rubbing my shoulder, and he's swinging away at this thing for <laughs> at least... At uh, least a good thirty seconds, and I, I'm. It's shaking mine. It's shaking my shoulder. So you just shaking let, mine. You can let go. Yeah, yeah you let Those go. vibrations are coming right down <laughs> your body. Yeah, he did That's the work. I, I almost wanted to get together. Get together. Yeah. Was, start moving. It was like synchronized, right. it was synchronized shaking, and I almost wow. felt like afterwards I should thank him. Like, yeah, thank you're you, like, sir. Wow, we got in the flow there. A little over, over, overkill though. But there. he was so big, you just like let him. Yeah, <laughs> because I wasn't going to say anything. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, thank you, my friend. Like, hey, man, reminds me the situation where about to get ourselves in today so we're we're going to record a how to defend yourself in a bar fight yes yeah. i'm pretty excited for I it. Am and a thrilled. little bit, a little bit nervous and we're and it's and the person teaching well, we're not it actually gonna fight well no you, no, no you the, get to play the chick that's why oh yeah sweet i get to play the douchebag in affliction who has to <laughs> who has to ju- try and pick up on justin you. has to pretend to be a girl adam Listen, has to be himself I'm, it's I'm, an interesting yeah. <laughs> i know Exactly. It's an interesting, yeah. as if you would be an asshole to, by right. the way, the guy coming, I don't know, I can say who it is, right? <laughs> of course. I can God. say it's Kyle Kingsbury. He's a ex-MMA, a pro MMA fighter, but. He's a big dude. As if yeah, like anybody would go up to Kyle's girlfriend while he's at the bar. Yeah. The guy, <laughs> he's massive and he's got, uh, you know, the all the signs of being able to kick your ass, like the color. Well, I think, I think we're going to, we haven't decided how it's going to look, but I think you're going to play the boyfriend. Justin's going to play the girlfriend. I'm going to be the asshole. Kyle's going to come save your, save you. Uh, so yeah. I'm the pussy boyfriend. Yeah, I don't. Want I've to always that. wanted That's to what you be. Get. You didn't want to have any lines. You know, <laughs> you said, so I was like, I don't want to have any lines. Like, uh, perfect. I have just the role for you. Oh, so I'm just gonna say <laughs> nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, sweetie. Yeah. I, 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 I want to be the bartender. I'm gonna, come, I'm gonna come over and just like take your girl from you. Yeah, and you're not gonna say shit. Wow, I can't wait to hear Adam's t- opening lines. You're so, it won't even. I'm just gonna grab you, bro. May, I got an idea. Wow. I'm just grab you by the pussy. Oh, it's aggressive. And then I'm gonna bring you, and, wow. I, and I'm gonna take you to the dance floor. And wow. then Sal's just gonna sit there and be like, "Fuck, I don't know what to do." He's wearing affliction, <laughs> and then he's just gonna sit there. And, and then uh, Kyle's gonna come over and 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 cause some beef and beat on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm he's not gonna wear a skirt. Why? Just cause. I thought it, we agreed on that. I'm not, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going with the blouse. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. The, the, okay. The, yeah. Well, you not, know, not the he's because you know Justin. I, I he's, feel like I could get violated. He's more Justin's. A, he's a, he's a pro, he's a very appropriate hey, conservative I wanted, woman. I wanted to ask I you guys. Did, did you guys? I literally today is the first day. I'm just feeling like I'm coming back to normal. I've been really tired the last two days, like overly tired, like yeah. to the like unmotivated to get off the couch type of tired. Really, I feel like yeah. it's it, well, a little bit of the time difference, you know, in Austin, but like really, it was just we were we were throttling at one thousand percent. So is anyone else? Because I I told yeah. Katrina I c- came home yesterday from work and she's like, "What's wrong with you?" And I'm like, "I'm fine. Never, I, I was, nothing was wrong with me, but I could feel my energy." And then when I sat on the couch, I was like, "I just didn't even want to." We get just up. put out a lot of energy when we were there. My yeah. gut was off there, so that might you know, but. Yesterday, I might have been tired had I not gotten so pissed off with the whole post office debacle. So that kind of uh, energized me, I guess, a little bit yeah. through mm. anger. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> yeah, no, otherwise, I think I'm, 
I think I'm feeling okay. You know, it's funny. I, I was, uh, you know, we talk a lot about the motivations behind why we maybe eat right or exercise or whatever. And we talk about how there's steps, right, of awareness with it. And, you know, the kind of the first step of awareness is doing it for aesthetics. And then the next step of awareness is doing it for health. And then the final step is you just it's just who you are. So you're not really doing it for a particular thing. It's just how you live. And those are the choices you make and you, and you enjoy doing it. And I realize that I'm still not really there yet because I, I, although aesthetics isn't my primary driving force anymore, my, uh, this, my gut health is still one of my primary forces in, uh, uh, or drivers. And let me tell you why that's a problem because some people will be like, well, that's a good thing. Here's why it's a problem. When my gut health is great, then I start to slip because I don't have that motivation because it's tied to that. You know what I'm saying? So for a while there, I was having great gut health. And so I just started pushing the boundaries mm -hmm. and then my body reacted and I had this autoimmune response now that I'm dealing with right now. So now I'm eating perfect and doing everything right. And everyone, and you know, my, my girlfriend's like, wow, you're so motivated. And it's like, yeah, but for the wrong reasons, like I should be doing this, uh, just because it's just a great way to live. Not because, uh, my body's telling me, fuck you. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's having this reaction. Yeah. You're just trying to find that balance, you know, and be flexible because when we're out, it's, it's a pain in the ass, you know, literally. To, yeah. So yeah, you're <laughs> yeah. blasting it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think, I, I think we all kind of do the same thing. I do the same thing. I, I, I find myself. It's like, it, it's like a wax as a wings, you know? <clears throat> Because when it, when we are, when we're together, which I which I think is funny, because you probably you probably think I eat like that, I eat the most you know off the chain when we're out traveling. Of course, like that's that's and and well, I probably all of us do. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I and I justify it because the those trips don't happen that often. You know, one of the worst things we do when we go uh, when we're all together because it's funny if you look at our food choices, except for the few times where we act like we're you know. 14 year old girls at a slumber party and we you know buy a cake and ice cream and shit like that which is pretty rare for the most part if people were to look at our nutrition even when we're eating quote unquote bad it's still pretty good yeah. you know the big thing that we do that we totally miss <laughs> is we eat zero vegetables yeah well that's what you know that's a hard thing to do it is because yeah. especially when you're traveling when it's you're traveling right. it's when i'm home i have like my routine like either things that I have in the house or places I go in case I can't get into my house, which I'm sure you guys all have the same thing. Mm -hmm. And when you're on the go, getting good fresh vegetables are, is yeah. fucking hard, dude. It is. It's, it's not a pain. Like it's super a, available. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's tough to do. I've, I've noticed that, uh, <clears throat> like it's such a dramatic difference in the way I feel when I don't get them. You know, like, I can eat meat, and meat I can dig I'm pretty good with. I don't have intolerances to meat for the most you part. You know, this is kind of a good transition into a question that I did see come up uh, multiple times in the last couple of weeks with people just kind of curious to how each of us individually eat and what are what are like our go-to go foods and what a, what a normal day of eating looks like for you. Um, I, I, I haven't shared my food in a long time because I haven't been tracking. So for me, it's... You know, v very much so intuitive eating. The only thing I would say that's different about how I'm eating now is I've recently gone, got back to making sure I'm getting enough protein because <clears throat> something that I found, and I wanted to share this on the podcast because I know we talk out a lot about um, the overconsumption of protein because in the bodybuilding industry, yeah, the recommendations are crazy. The, yeah. The recommendation is crazy. And if you're a bikini or men's physique, if you're a competitor, more than likely you're an over consumer, but there is a chance that if you're not a competitor, you're just a normal person who's trying to work out. You could be under consuming, especially if you're a bigger guy like mm -hmm. myself, I under consume and, and here's the things that I've connected with why that happens for me is for a long time, I was a huge carb and sugar eater. So it's very easy and natural for me to gravitate towards carbohydrates. And I find that when I'm intuitive eating, in quotation here, I tend to uh, still gravitate towards the carbs. So I have to actively go after protein to make sure I hit my uh, RDA. Mm. And I, I've noticed that <clears throat> since that's the, and that's the only thing that I'm really watching or tracking right now is just making sure I'm, I'm making it a point to make sure I get that in. I'm not really caring about where my carb intake, where my fat intake is. I'm, I'm choosing the same type of foods for the most part, just where I would find myself <clears throat> going after a carb. I go, wait a second, I'm still only at a hundred grams of protein today. I should go get a meal that's more balanced. Now, I think I it's I think it's important to note with that 
is that uh, you were under eating protein, but sometimes that's okay, and it's actually probably a good thing to do that sometimes because you'll notice. And well, you actually made, made very, a comment. Yeah, it made me very responsive. When yeah, I like you bumped it, and you, it's not like you bumped it to like. 300 grams of protein. Oh, I'm not even over 200. Right. You bumped it to- like 180, you know, 180, 180 to 200. Right. So you were eating under 100, which is uh, for muscle building purposes. It's not for essential- pro- You had essential protein. It's not like you were under your essential intake, but you were eating less than the ideal amount for muscle building and performance, and you did that for a little while. And then when you went up to 180 grams, which for a 220-pound guy is still not a ton, you noticed this like boost from it. Oh, right away. And I think it's important sure. people know that- it's it, it's a good idea to have days where you have lower protein. It's a good idea to have periods of time where you're lower carb or lower fat or, uh, you know, just like it's all those things. Like everybody says, you need to have ton, great sleep all the time. Well, sometimes it's probably a good idea to not have great sleep, to place a little bit of that stress on your body. Now, you, it's important to, uh, you, you, you want to understand that, the individual variances by how we respond to stresses can vary dramatically. So, if you're uh, if you're if you're an older individual, or if you have certain type of you know certain disorders where you need a higher protein intake, lower protein for you might not be a good idea for long periods of time. But for someone like Adam, low protein every you know here and there for a week or so, and then you bump it back up, you'll notice some pretty cool benefit. Um, you know, I do. So, so right now you're eating more protein. What are the foods you gravitate towards? Um, I do. Here's kind of like my go-to. Um, I get a lot of Brussels sprouts, a lot of bacon, a lot of eggs, uh, a lot of avocado, um, a lot of spinach. I do a lot of berries. Uh, so strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries uh, in my diet. Um, I utilize a lot of coconut oil. Uh, and butter, I can I do that a lot in my coffee or on my vegetables. Um, do as far as my meats, bison. Uh, I do a lot of steak. Um, I, I, you know what I haven't had a lot of lately that I used to a lot when I competed was chicken, mm-hmm. just because I I tend to gravitate more towards fat right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and well, the shredded chicken <clears throat> with the salsa thing that you showed me was was pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we I have a pretty good. Uh, I, I know I just rattled off a few things, but I, I we rotate pretty well. I what mean, are your carbohydrate sources? Um, I don't eat a lot of carbs right now, mm. unless we're off on a trip like we did, where we were eating some like those chips are like the first chips I've had in fucking forever. Oh, the I can't corn remember chips. the last time yeah. I, I had some like that. Um, I also I get a lot of like we go to Chipotle a lot. That's like a go to fast fast food place for me. So. I get beans and rice in there. Mm. So, and I sometimes I'll do my Brussels sprouts. I have this dish that I make with Brussels sprouts, uh, bacon, walnuts, and um, uh, bison, and then I'll do a little bit of rice sometimes with that. So, rice is a pretty staple one in there. I don't do any uh, any wheat or any. Uh, I don't do any bread at all. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's kind of the the major. That's good. Yeah, that's the major rotation of, of foods, and then all my meats I, I pretty much cycle through. But those are probably the most go to meals. Yeah, right now I'm uh, right now I'm going pretty keto just because I'm trying to. It does it seems to work well for my gut when I'm trying to reset it. Um, so it's pretty high fat. Uh, I do eat lots of vegetables though, and uh, so if the carbs I do get are usually from the greens uh, like broccoli, uh, Brussels sprout, um, uh, rapini, uh, spinach, that kind of stuff. Um, uh, meats are there. Uh, the fats I use are similar to the ones you use. I don't even have really much fruit, um, at this particular stage, just cause I'm, like I said, I'm trying to get things settled. But when I do eat carbohydrates, my go-tos are, uh, white rice and sweet, pot- man, I'll tell you what, sweet potato, uh, is fantastic for my gut, at least. Like if I'm going to have carbohydrates, if I have sweet potatoes, sometimes that's what balances me out, believe it or not. Oh, I really like sweet yeah. potato, too. How about you, Justin? <clears throat> um, yeah, I do a lot of Brussels sprouts. Uh, we just we signed back up for this, um, I forget, like a CSA where mm. you get you know produce delivered. And uh, we made an, uh, an effort to do that because it's like, like you said, when you're on the road, you just don't have the vegetables in particular, like available, and these vegetables are so fucking good. Really? Yeah, they're just they're amazing, and um, you get a lot of different colors with that. Like, so if you get like carrots or whatever, you get like the the purple and the you know the white ones, and um, so 
<clears throat> yeah, I'll do that. I'll do like broccoli and cauliflower from that. And uh, so typically um, meat wise, like we'll I'll, I'll, now since it's kind of warming up, I'll do a lot more barbecuing. And so we'll add, um, you know, like different steaks and um, and also like uh, I'll do chicken and um, do you guys eat lamb? Rotate it up. I, I do. Uh, I do, I do pork veal. actually, and so I do like pork chops and stuff. Dude, and lamb is amazing. I haven't done lamb yet. Yeah. Lamb is really good. It's higher in uh, CLA than other uh, red meats. Mm-hmm. It's a high fat meat. So if you're, uh, or at least certain cuts are. So if you're in a high, you know, high fat diet, it's a great option. Mm. It's got a good nutrient profile. Uh, lamb meat tends to not be fucked with as much as beef. So it tends to be better sources. Veal and bison are like my two go-to. I love bison. And then I rotate the other ones. Right, I love start bison. doing that. One thing I did like change up recently that has made a big difference for me because I am I I just realized like how much dairy I I intake. Just paying attention to it because for me like I can handle it. Like mm-hmm. dairy's not a big deal, but um I just as we were talking and going through all this stuff like with the podcast you start to realize like, well, I've been doing this like every single day. Like I definitely hit up some cheese and milk and, you know, and, uh, butter obviously, but, um, that's, that's like a staple part of my diet. So I've eliminated most of it in like uh, real sparing amounts of cheese. Have you noticed any difference? Big time. Yeah. I already lost some weight. Yeah. It was just because, I mean, the calories I'm sure for Mm -hmm. one, um, but just like giving that time in between to kind of like cycle out of it. And I'm going to reintroduce it, uh, in a couple of weeks, but, uh, and see what happens. yeah. But even then too, like, you know, some stuff with my gut and, and heartburn and all that has, has gone down a little bit, not like a lot, but a little bit. Um, so I'm always, I'm always kind of like cycling things in and out now to, to kind of see how I react, but that it's was kind one of, of them. Fu- it's kind of a fun way to eat, right? When you're, when you're thinking variety. Well, I also think that there's. This I we were just talking Katrina and I were talking about this the other day about how how much we can change our our flavor profile by um, just being consistent and disciplined about eating a certain way for a while. Like the foods that I eat right now are couldn't be further from what I ate ten years ago. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I was my diet was so different, and I don't even I don't even crave or desire any of those foods. And so, but I do remember. I really remember that transition of going from, you know, the hot pockets and the ice cream and the fast food into eating like that all the time, being young, 20 years old and playing basketball and moving so much that none of that shit mattered. Like it didn't matter. I could stay in shape and still consume all those foods to later in life realizing like, whoa, I can't. And then that transition of, oh, I miss those things. And then going on and off the wagon all the time to where finally actually disciplining myself for long enough to eat a certain way that my palate completely changed. And now those foods don't even sound good to me. And Isn't fact, that interesting? It's very interesting because for years- They taste fake, don't they? they, they it's got like a weird, <clears throat> like almost like an engineered taste. You couldn't, so. I mean, you couldn't pay me to go to a Taco Bell or, you know, <laughs> or- have or have a bowl of cereal. I mean, something like that was like a staple in my diet for a very long time. And not only was yeah, that it sounds painful. To well, you. and it was good. I liked it. Like I love to get up in the morning. Like it, I remember transitioning into being a trainer and transitioning out of cereal for my morning breakfast every day. Like I ate that every single day for a very long time. And when I first gave it up, it was tough. And then I would go back and have it. Mm-hmm. And it was like a treat. And like now it's been so long since I've consumed a lot of that food. It, I, it would just be, gr- I'd be like, no, it's cool. I'll fast. Like if someone out offered something like that, yeah. not only do I not even crave it anymore, it doesn't sound good at all, but it took a long time to do that. It takes a while to change those, those flavor profiles and it's really made all the foods that are better for my body. So, I mean, I've never ate bowl. And Sal, you were really the person that really got me in this direction of like making an effort to just eat vegetables like a meal. Like I've never even thought like to, it just never yeah. dawned on me like to make a <laughs> bowl of vegetables and like just eat vegetables and just have some butter and olive oil and salt or whatever on it. 
And once I started training myself to do that, I actually crave that. Like, Isn't that I'll, interesting? Yeah, like Katrina will ask me, like, what do you feel like for dinner? I'm like, let's just have a big ass bowl of like Brussels sprouts with a little bit of bacon and walnuts. No, let's just so, have a huge, so good. Yeah, and that's all we'll eat. And I feel amazing after I eat it. Yeah, but great shit. That didn't. If you now. <laughs> You know, I know there's somebody who's listening right now and that's going like, fuck that. That doesn't sound good at all because I was that guy. You know, just a, just a few years ago, if you said that, I'd be like, fuck, that doesn't sound good at all. But it takes time to, to change that, that flavor profile. And when you do, it's pretty awesome to start to want and crave those types of foods. And then it's a lot easier. It's, then it's easy. It's much easier to do the what we call, you know, quote unquote, intuitive eating because le- leading up to that, Intuitive eating just seems so impossible because most people are still struggling. Well, because and their battling. intuition is to eat, you know, <clears throat> fat foods that are not good. For yes, them. and they're still battling all these cravings, mm-hmm. and they haven't uh, stayed away from it for long enough. So, bring it. Where's the bird? Step right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. Our first question is from Lucas Hunt 10. What are non negotiable foods that you buy organic versus other foods you give leeway to? If it's got a thick skin. Yeah, that's so, so, so avocados. Ba- bana- banana, avocado. Um, non organic. Yeah, non organic. Yeah, Those are, they- I would go walnuts, you know, yeah. things, things that have hard shells or hard skins that you peel away to eat. If I'm going to go non organic, I, I typically try it. Katrina hates me when I do this because the bill is like tw- twice as the <laughs> twice yeah. as much. Because uh, I, I, I typically like to just stay organic with everything. Um, but I do know that that can be really, it can be really expensive. And so I've told her, like, listen, if you're shopping and you're trying to save us a couple bucks and you don't go organic, these are the must. You know, like, mm. don't get me strawberries and blueberries. It's fucking non-organic. They hammer the shit out of those. Yeah, yeah. don't don't get yeah. me things that are that I'm eating the whole thing and they're spraying the shit out of them because of bugs and stuff like that. So, if it's if it's got a thick skin, that's kind of my rule. Um, uh, uh, organic or non-organic uh, things like uh, beef and me- all my meats, I tend to like all organic. Um, yeah, would it, for like my kids, um, so my kids will still have wheat because they they don't seem to have uh, any reactions to them. I've taken it away and given it to them, and uh, so like if they have pasta, for example, pasta can be made with uh, you know semolina, which comes from wheat. I go organic always on that because uh, wheat uh, it gets uh, and people don't know this. A lot of wheat gets destroyed, or I shouldn't say destroyed, gets hammered with glyphosates as part of their their uh, finishing off process or drying process and glyphosates may be the reason why gmo foods uh are, are probably not good for people or certain gmo foods because we know glyphosates first off the world health organization has listed glyphosates uh which are herbicides by the way as uh, a probable carcinogen um now of course the amounts you're going to get them when you eat food are acutely totally fine, but of course, if you eat this over years, you're prob- you probably you may be increasing your risk for certain types of cancer, and uh, they affect uh, the microbiome for sure. So, my kids, if they eat you know anything wheat based, always organic, whether it's bread or pasta or whatever. Um, milk definitely go organic, yeah, uh, because they f- the, the non organic varieties are fucked with quite a bit um, with uh, you know antibiotics, antibiotics and stuff like yeah. that. Um, like Adam was saying, the thick skin stuff, I don't really worry too, especially avocados, I don't worry too much about. Now with meats, I almost always go organic, but when I'm buying a cut of steak, like a ribeye or something like that, uh, sometimes I go organic, sometimes I don't because it's expensive. Uh, cuts of meat can get real expensive organic or grass-fed. Fuck, yeah, you grass get grass-fed is, organic, mm-hmm. your bill is through the roof and... Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Like grain-fed steak <laughs> it's tastes not as better. Tasty, yeah. Grain-fed steak tastes better um, because it's got. Uh, well, you have to say fat. that because a lot of people will have like grass-fed steak, and it's like, yeah, but it, it it's a little more tough. You know, back you in the know day, that. do you guys know this? Back in the day, 
uh, they used to advertise like grain fed beef. Yeah. Because it tastes better. Well, yeah, because you're pumping the cow full of they're fucking fat. sugar. Yeah, they're fat you're pumping and them full unhealthy. Of sh- <laughs> you're pumping them full of molasses and mm-hmm. sugar. That's what you're giving them. That's mm-hmm. why they get all fatty up like that, and it makes the steak all fatty. Yep, so. yep, it yep. tastes yep. great. Yeah. So uh, eggs, I always get <clears throat> organic, and I also try to get eggs that are pasture-raised, so organic and pasture-raised, mm. um, because there's actually a pretty significant difference in the nutrient profile. Um, pasture raised chickens will eat uh, insects and bugs and stuff like that, and they'll and you'll notice when you crack the egg open oh, with yeah. the yolk, it, is, it makes a big difference. And uh, me going to like having my own chickens and then just letting them roam and and finding insects and whatever's you know foraging around and finding whatever's available in our area. I mean, they eat. What was awesome about chickens that uh, I, I figured out because we used to have like a real bad yellow jacket problem like they would come and like make a nest and then i would always see that every summer they'd be a nest and we'd like have to avoid these fucking asshole insects you know (laughs) and i just realized they haven't been there ever since i got chickens oh the chickens get the wasp fucking eat them how they eat with them. their fu- beaks. With their, no, the, but the wasp nest is normally up. Up. No, no, somewhere. no. It's in. It's they bear. Wasp nests are always in the ground, like in the. I ivy. didn't know that. Yeah. Huh? And your chickens are just fucking them up. They eat them. Hell yeah! You know chickens. Like, yeah. You know chickens evolved from fucking like T Rex and shit, right? Dude, they're straight up dinosaurs. Did you know that? No. They're, chickens are direct uh, descendant of uh, like dinosaurs. I look at their feet. What? Yeah. Look at it like a T Rex. Literally. You knew that. Yeah. Yeah, because that's why they're they're going back and they're trying to like put feathers on like all the dinosaurs just because they're like looking at that as like they're a, like they a probably descendant. had feathers. Yeah. Oh no shit! Yeah. I did not know that. Chickens are little badasses. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know there were little T Rexes running around. Yeah, they <laughs> are. They, they run like them. You ever watch Jurassic Park where like all the raptors are running together? It looks yeah. just like that. They're not oh, very smart though. They're really dumb. Yeah. Which we shit on everything. <laughs> so I spray them. Next question, please. Next up is from Andrea Cameron. Have you ever had to fire a client? If so, why? And how did you do it? <laughs> I fired. I fired uh, one that I can remember. One. I fired one client in my entire life. Now I've had clients where I just stopped contacting them. Yeah. Where Sometimes you know that counts. Where they're super inconsistent, and what I'll do typically is I'll give them, if they no show on me, I'll give them a few opportunities. And then, because I'll call them and say, hey, you missed your appointment. Let's set up another time. After about two times of doing that, I won't call them anymore. And then when they call me, they are no longer a priority on my schedule. So I'll give them like an opening that, you know, here, this is the only opening I have. And like, well, that doesn't work with my schedule. I'm like, well, we're going to have to wait. Um, so there's that kind of like kind of firing, but not really. That's just me saying, look, you're, you're not being consistent. I can't prioritize you. Yeah. But there is one time where I actually told the lady – uh, I will no. I'm no longer going to train you. I'm going to refund you the rest of your training. Yeah. I had this lady come in, and she was just, just a, just a bitch, just a huge bitch. Like she came in, older woman, and she told me everything. She she was one of these people. This is how she talked. Um, I just I want be a little more toned and strengthened, but I don't want to lift a lot of weight. And, you know, when I come in, I don't like the music too loud. And uh, can we do exercises seated? And I'm just like, okay, here's this is going to be fun <laughs> to train this lady. And so I, when she came in, I was very much like, okay, I'm going to, you know, get her, get her to the point where she can start to enjoy this. And this woman would tell me how to train her. Well, I want to point out, too, that I, already, I know both of you very, very well, and including myself, that... We normally take someone like this on like a challenge, right? Like totally. You know, like I used to like okay, you're nobody else wants to train this person, or they're mm-hmm. super difficult. Like I would embrace that because I felt like it challenged my skill set. Totally. So, you know, totally. I just want to point that out that you're talking to trainers too that would love. I used to love to face. We're gonna I, give you the benefit. <clears throat> no, my goal. I was known as a guy who took all the shit clients yeah. that nobody oh, yeah. wanted. No, my goal was was I'm going to and then he gave really me. help this woman out. <laughs> And she would tell me how to train her, and she would stop her reps short. And by no means was I training her intensely at all. It, she literally would just put her weights down and, and not say anything. She, she, I, we'd pick up a weight. I'd be like, okay, let's, we're going to try going for 10 reps. She'd put the weights down after three reps and just look 
and just literally stare off into the either the mirror or look off into space and they'd be like, why did you put the weights down? And she'd be like, I, I don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that exercise anymore. Can we do something else? This was constant, constant battling. So finally, it got on my nerves. This is after training her for like a month. She had bought like 30 sessions. So this is after a month of training. I finally fired her. We're doing shoulder presses. And I give her five pound dumbbells, which she could have lifted probably 12 to 15. She wasn't a weak woman or, or you know, she didn't have lots of problems. So I give her fives. And she's doing them, and she's doing them in a way where, imagine if you gave someone five Valium pills, and they, uh, on top of it, are just they just they just want to put the least amount of effort into anything. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Eyes kind of like, <sighs> like, and she's lifting, and she's like, like, like you would lift your arm if you were yeah. super lazy, tired, and like I don't want to reach the remote control, and you kind of like ah, reach like that. That's how she was yeah. doing it, right? And she's kind of doing a. With the five pounds. And then she doesn't put the weights down. She throws them on the floor. <laughs> she throws them and she goes, I'm not doing these anymore. Those are way too this heavy. Is bullshit. And I'm like, listen, I said, I've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> okay. I will always consider what you have to say in terms of the weight. However, I can tell you unequivocally, 100%, with 100% confidence, that that weight is not too light. You could do probably 40 reps with that. Well, I don't want to do it anymore. So we debated a little bit back and forth. So I said, fine, I'll get you the one pound weights. She's like, good. Finally, do what I, you have to, you know, finally you're going to do what I tell you. I do pay you after all. She's making comments <laughs> like this. I'm like, this fucking bitch. So I give her the one pound dumbbells, right? Do you even have one pound dumbbells? I had these little tiny. Wow. <laughs> what are the Fisher what Price fucking Air? dumbbells? They're yeah. like what? Because we <laughs> yeah. no, we'd use them for rehab because I had a physical therapist in there, so uh, we had all these little. Because you know, most gyms don't even have a one pound dumbbell. No, most gyms just you're like you're ee, ee, lucky ee, ee. if they have threes. No, no, no. you're they, lucky if you have threes. They were for rehab purposes because we I had a physical therapist that would work with like stroke victims and shit like that, and she would do that kind of stuff. So oh, like balloons. I give her, and they're like, they're both purple and they're both small. They're, they look like paperweights. And I put them in her hands and I said, okay, we're going to do 100 reps. Yeah, 5,000 reps. Exactly. Right. I'm like, no, you're going to fuck it. Like, you're going to do 100 reps. I'm gonna, like, that's what we're going to do. And she does 10 and she throws them on the ground and it's, again. And I said, I told you not to throw the weights. Like, that's not. So back and forth, back and forth. Finally, I stopped and I said, listen, I said, Never in my entire said I've been doing this for, and so I've been doing this for 20 years now. So then it must have been 12 or 13 years. I said, look, I've been doing this for about, for over 10 years. I've worked with lots of people. I've trained lots of trainers. I've managed lots of gyms. Never in my entire life have I not wanted to train someone as badly as I don't want to train you. <laughs> and so I said, I am not training you anymore. I said, follow me. And she looked at me with this shock, like, oh, how dare you? And I said, come over here. And I wrote her a check for her remaining session. And I gave it to her. And I said, good luck. And I walked her out the door. It's the only time I've ever fired anybody. And it was, uh, it felt great. <laughs> That's like, I told the story on yeah, here. Remember I told the story where the lady threw the weight at me and oh, I fired her. That's hilarious. Yeah, 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 that was a long time ago. Um, that was the only time that I like walked out on a client. Like she, mid-session, <clears throat> very similar story to Sal's, which is funny. It shows you what it takes. And this, but this lady I had for seven years. So I trained her for seven years. Like a self, like an abusive a relationship. glutton for punishment. Very yeah. much so. In fact, and I used to, I, you know, I, I didn't share this with a lot of people I have now because it's been on the podcast. But <laughs> Not I, sure. yeah, I, I remember like, I remember what a bitch that she was. And I remember... Like it was, it took everything in me, but it, to me, like I used it as like sharpening my skills. Like if I could make, if I could win this woman over, if I could get her to like me, to show up to these sessions, to have a good workout, I could fucking train anybody. Like I just really, mm -hmm. and so I took on, I took on every session like that. And, you know, we, we had a relationship for seven years, man, where she was coming in five days a week, sometimes more. And you know, towards the end of my career, when I kind of knew I was on my way out and I was, she was one of the few clients I still was, was keeping with me. And I just finally couldn't take it anymore. It was a session, just like Sal was saying, like she was notorious for this. Like I'd, you know, write up this and for her, it was like, she always wanted to do like crazy workouts. Like she loved that cross before CrossFit existed. She liked that CrossFit type of mentality. Yep. And she loved for me just to 
punisher. You know, she was an executive for a, a big major company. She had a lot of stress in her day. And then she would come in and she wanted me to punish her. And she didn't want to meditate. She didn't want to stretch. She didn't want to do easy movement. She wanted me to hammer her all the time. And then not only did she want me to hammer her all the time, she didn't want to do half the shit that I would. And so I would arrange like this workout and I'd write all these clever exercises and, and f- think through like what she wouldn't like and what she would. And then we'd, I'd have it all ready on my clipboard. And then we go and we get to the exercise. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And then I take her, there, I don't want to do this. And she would do that to me all the time. And I finally took her over and we're doing squat thrusters. And she was strong as fuck. So we were doing like squat thrusters with like 60 or 60 or 80 pounds. I can't remember what it was. And she's thrusting away. And and I it was finally the it was the first exercise that she wanted to do out of all the exercises and I just kept I just kept as soon as she set it down like right on the thirty second mark pick it back up let's go thirty second mark pick it back up let's go and I just push and push her and then you could tell she was just getting fatigued and tired and she's trying to muscle through it because she's and she's angry and the last and she finally just threw the the barbell at me and it landed right on my ankles and bounced up didn't hurt me it barely it barely hit me. But the fact that she would throw it at me, I was so fed up with training her. I just turned around. It was like we still had like 15 minutes left in the hour. And I just turned around, didn't say anything. And I just walked away from her. And it was the last session that I ever trained with her. Did she ever call you or anything? She still had sessions left. She wrote me a letter and she sent me- Did she apologize? Yeah, but this was, so this was her MO. This was part of this abusive relationship that we were in. Oh my God. Yeah, no, she would, she would treat me like shit. There'd be times where I would finally be kind of fed up with it. And then she'd write me a letter. She did, it was a total unhealthy relationship. And- I was feeding into it by allowing her to stay to stay with me, and so I realized that as I got older and wiser, and finally just said, I, "I'm over this. I, I'm not going to feed into this unhealthy relationship." <laughs> and so I bounced on her, and that was the only client that I walked away or did something like that. I did. <clears throat> I have fired clients recently, and that's only because. Now I have like this spiel, like I don't take, I've, I always keep like a couple people. Like right now I'm, I have two people that I, I take care of and it's very, I think we're all very similar. We always keep like one or two people because it helps us keep the pulse mm-hmm. on, on training clients. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's healthy for us if we're going to stand on a platform like this and tell people how to train and work out that we're, we keeps, stay. It keeps your information relevant. It and does. Connected to right. And it keeps us in, in touch. And so we all kind of keep, but we don't promote that. Nobody is advertising for business or doing anything like that. So because of that, you know, I kind of like handpick people that I'm going to take on. And I always give them this like spiel, like right before. And part of that is, Here's the deal. It's a minimum three month commitment with me because then I, that's just because I know that if I'm really going to change somebody's relationship with food and exercise, I need at least that much time. Usually a lot more. Yeah, that's the minimum. Yeah, right? and and I'm really it's the three months. I know that in that time I'm going to have shown and really taught them some things that normally is going to get them to continue on for a long time with me, so I could really help them and change their life. So. I do tell them that it's a three month minimum com- commitment and I have all these other things and kind of lay out what it's going to look like. But then I also say during that three, those three months, it's a three month commitment from you, but I may fire you and I will fire you if, and I kind of go over mm-hmm. all these mm-hmm. things that I, I expect from them. And the reason why that is, is because I've got a ton of people that w- would love to be that value your time. Yeah, that would want yeah. to be training with me. And I'm taking this person on. It's normally a referral from somebody else or somebody who I think needs a lot of help that I think is going to be challenging. Or they've gone to tons of trainers. They've tried tons of things. And they're getting no success. And I genuinely want to help them. But sometimes even those people that need the most amount of help like that aren't ready for it. And they're not ready for someone like me. They're not ready to make that change. They're not ready to make that commitment. And I just don't have the time. I don't. What and I tell them, like, you're hiring me right now as as your coach. Like, I'm not a one on one trainer like I used to be, where I work for a company and my job is to motivate you and stuff. Like, I'm not here to motivate you. So if you're looking for a motivation, that's I'm here to help guide you and and help you make these connections with food and exercise and your and your and yourself. So if you don't have the desire to put the little bit of work in that I'm going to ask you, I'm just going to, I'm going to tell you to kick rocks. Mm, And so that's happened. That's actually happened twice in the last year where I've had somebody who 
is it doing the check-ins? Is it doing the work that they need to put in for them? And I'm like, it's weird how some people just want a trainer. Yeah, well, they think that that's yeah. the the next piece, right? Oh, he's going to give me this. Well, this, it's handled. You know. Yeah, I, right. I bought you. You're yeah. not going to have to do any of the work. Where it's like, no, you have to. So with me, you're you've got to do all these check-in things, mm-hmm. and, and you got to be tracking. I want all that. So because I'm really trying to help you dive deep into, <laughs> you know, how these foods are affecting your body. And if you just you can't even do those little simple things of tracking it for me, I can't really help you because mm-hmm. and then i'm not going to spend all day long trying to motivate you to do that so i have fired people for that yeah i fired i fired one person and uh i mean i've had a lot of difficult clients that i've put up with for years and um for the most part for the most part i would say probably 80 percent of like my most absolute like difficult client have turned into like my biggest supporter uh, because they just become this, it's like the, a cult thing. Like they just, they follow you to the end of the earth, you know, <laughs> cause like you're the only one that put up with their shit. And, uh, you know, so I've had, I've definitely took on the same approach. Like, you know, Adam was talking about with just like looking at it as a challenge and like, I can win them over and I can, I can sort of steer them in the direction that they need to go subliminally, you know, without them even knowing it. And I've done that with a ton of people, but there was this lady that just, and I, and I have talked about this a long time ago, same kind of a thing where, um, she was, she was in the punishment mode and it was like, it wasn't just that it was the punishment type of workouts. Like it was, it was literally like, what do you call it? Not like, uh, not bulimia, but it was like, Orexia or what do they call it? Where it's like exercise is their their way of it's like, like orthorexia. Orthorexia. Yeah. So it it was like so strikingly obvious to me that she was like she would come in and she wanted to get to that level where she wanted to puke, she wanted to feel like shit, she wanted to sweat like puddles. She was like punishing herself. Yeah, it was just like I mean I felt like gross. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then she would talk shit to me during the the workout that it was like no that you got to do hard harder than that <laughs> you, you got to make this one harder somehow <laughs> I'm like okay you know and so yeah. like she would like f- she would get me into a place where I felt like I was compromising my my integrity as a trainer and like I would have her do this ridiculous shit just because she was she would talk so much shit to me. <laughs> And, like, I would get so pissed that it would, like, feed into my, like, competitiveness. And so I would have her do all this, like... She's like, I'll show yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, you don't think that's hard? And then I would have her do some other ridiculous shit that I probably wouldn't even mention because I just... I like, oh, was so, like... Well, this is why we speak out on this so much, right? Because we know, we know these type A personalities that yeah. the ones that need that type of a workout the least... Are not... Oh, yeah, exactly. Are the ones that want it the most. And we... I tell you what, I'll be the first to admit that I used to do the same shit and it's so bad. Well, yeah. part of it is they're like it's almost like they're challenging you as a trainer. Yeah, like, right. Like, yeah. oh, you can't train me hard enough. Oh, Here's, yeah. She uh, would take it even to she would leave and she'd travel because her her business and she would hire a trainer while she oh, was no. at this other location and then come back and talk. Come shit back like, and talk <laughs> shit that they that they gave me this badass workout. And you're working stuff <laughs> for pussies and all this kind of shit. And then so I basically was just. I took her over to to the desk and I, I don't know if I don't think it was you Adam it was somebody else and I was like look um you know you're not a fit for me like <laughs> what you're asking is unreasonable unhealthy and this is not the way to pursue fitness and I was like you you got to check yourself I was like you need to you need to be paired up with somebody else that's going to put up with this and I'm done with you <laughs> and I just fucking like like sign this like we got through our our last like 20 30 session bullshit and I was like, Dude, we're done, not, you know. And then after that, she'd look at me in the gym and just kind of look over at me all like, you know, so because she had trained with somebody else and was talking shit to them. And she'd look over at me and I was like, this is awkward, you know. Fuck. Yeah, it was bad. Quick interruption by our sponsors, you guys. Lots of people have been asking us how they can support the Mind Pump Mafia family. Our first one is our Chimera Coffee that we love. You guys go to ChimeraCoffee.com. That's Chimera with a K for 10% off. Don't forget Mind Pump at the checkout. We also have our Big Top Beard Company.com for 33% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. Checkout. Also, Brain FM. We talk so much about this for sleep and meditation. It's Brain.fm for 20% off. Also, Mind Pump at the checkout. 
You guys, we also talk a lot about books on here all the time. We're using that Audible. You guys can get a free trial, 30-day trial, plus one free audio book if you go to audibletrial.com forward slash mind pump. And then last, we get lots of people asking about Ben Greenfield's CBD supplement, so we hit him up to hook you guys up. You go to getnatureblend.com forward slash mind pump for that discount. For the skinny, fat girls... If you didn't find your passion in health and fitness, what other path could you see yourself going down and doing as a career? Easy. That's oh, easy. Really? Yeah. Really? Fire away. Jiggle. Uh, yeah. No. Two. Bus um, driver. Mm-hmm. Totally. <laughs> we did this game oh, that's already. Right. There's two. <laughs> Bus uh, driver. That's two right. Thing, two things I could see myself doing. Uh, one is a, uh, a teacher. I could totally see myself. Really? Being, yeah, professor. Really? Yeah, I'd work with high school or, or totally, college students. A professor that. with that high school degree? Huh? <laughs> well, that's the thing. Like, if, if, if we went on to get like a degree somewhere, well, what's I could the see, name for hidden here's treasure? Here's the funny thing. I had such a boring, uh, non-memorable um, experience in school that it was it was so unstimulating that I just didn't do it. But now, um, having you know, under, really understanding that learning can be, especially in college. Okay, so we're going to pretend that we could have the credentials to do. Well, what, what I you, would totally do it. I would totally because I go. was thinking like, like, let's say like, boom, tomorrow, fitness. Like, what would I go run out? And oh, like, like do? today? Yeah. Well, that's what I, was, I was gonna. That's a fair answer. I just didn't yeah. think of it that way. Like, cause well, that could would, change my answer. Yeah. That if I could have a PhD in something, that maybe I would head to. Like, yeah. No, it would be a teacher because I would. I know? love. I love working with kids. I love teaching lead uh, I love leading I love coaching in those particular ways motivation all that stuff um and the second thing would be motivational speaker um I would uh, and that's as, as as an older adult I don't think I would have been able to I do that I kind of feel like that's what you do right now though in a sense a little bit on the yeah. podcast but yeah. I'm you're talking not, about you're not playing this game very far I'm talking about like a legit motivational <laughs> speaker like like you pay to come watch me and like our I, boy Craig Caperso wants to be maybe like that yeah yeah I don't know he was trying to do that yeah you didn't know that oh that, yeah that's yeah, right that's like Craig Craig's ultimate goal is to be that like oh, really? he, yeah above all things I mean he's doing all this other cool. stuff right now but he, he's, I love his have you seen his videos with him working out with his daughter yeah they're cute oh yeah. man yeah. always warms me up when melts. I see people with their kids and he's a he's a good dad it looks Mel- like melts, so melts melt your heart you know um. <sighs> This, that's the teacher thing's got me, man. I can't believe you would be a teacher. That's I great. love working that's, with kids. I, I volunteered God, uh, I at schools. Kids. I've volunteered at schools many, many times. And Kimmy I really loves it. educating people. It's a well, perfect I, fit. Yeah, I get that. Uh, I get that. You do like to teach. Thrives so off of I feel it. like yeah. we, we each have. You know, I think I think I like to lead more than I like to teach. Like so, I like I like leadership type roles. Um, <laughs> a general. <Yeah>. I'm yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. I am very uh, I'm very money motivated. And when I got into cannabis, that was like a big driver for me because I wasn't like this like marijuana guy when I went that direction. And so when I was when I was focused just on money and and I was doing something, I thought that I would be happy. And it took about a year or two into that for me to realize that that's not what makes me happy. So seeing myself outside of fitness uh, completely like just, okay, you can't do anything related to health and fitness. That would be really challenging for myself for sure. Because I kind of left, I left fitness for a while. I did a detour and I've done other types of businesses that have nothing to do with fitness from vending machines to, you know, mobile car detailing businesses. So I've done shit that has nothing to do with fitness because I want to make more money. And none of them are fulfilling for me can, as like fitness is to me. I love doing health and fitness and helping people in that direction. If I had to do something else for a career, I would probably use my sales skills. I would do something where, and I and I don't know what that would look like because I. It what would, would you sell? Yeah, I don't know. Like I tech. I, well, then yeah, you'd be rich. Yeah, or medical supplies Seen or him. something in that direction. Um, I've got. I I did uh, for a while there. I was picking up books on uh, becoming a you know a loan officer and and selling r- real estate and going that direction. I could see myself doing that. I could totally get into that. Um, but I you know it's it's really tough, man. Especially since I have left fitness and came back. If I'd only been in fitness, there'd probably be a lot of things that would uh, pique my interest because I am driven by money. But once I I saw that and I realized that wow it did like I'm not happy I didn't realize that would happen that way and being a kid and I think I had to go through that to to feel that so I don't know I'd probably be I've, you don't think you do porn 
<sighs> that would be like he, a, he tried it and it yeah. wasn't his thing. Yeah, yeah, I don't know with the me thinning hair and You're getting so older and I'm getting gray in my beard. I don't know if I could pull that off. Maybe twenty you do webcam porn, twenty seven you know, amateur stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, oh dude, that's actually, where the money's at. Actually, yeah, no. If I had no morals whatsoever, I would totally be like one of those Instagram girls right now that I think is fascinating as shit. Where they build the social media following with like you know, 100,000 plus people and then they have their own little private channel and then I lay on my bed and I like play with feathers and stuff all over <laughs> myself for like fifty nine ninety nine, and you get all access to me and all I gotta do is like sit in my room and... The feathered boy. Yeah, play feathers all over yeah. myself. And, He's, he plays and, tickles. I just think it's so awesome how, how girls right now can do that. Well, I'm sure there's guys... Why is that fascinating? It's just... It's, that's human that's nature. That's what men will pay for. Yeah. Well... What's fascinating about it is in the past, in order for you, if you go all the way back in time when that started, you would actually have to sleep with these men to make that money. So you could be a virgin and be a webcam whore and wow. make <laughs> and make millions of dollars. Like that's that's very fa- that's not fascinating to you. I think that's very no, fascinating. Yeah. I think I think to you- think you could be a, vir- a virgin, but then have. Tons of money from men that are are paying to to see you naked. I the, think that's the market's kind of that fascinating. The, the market mm. might be a little saturated. If you take so all you the have to be kind take of all like the moral take tease. All, all the people that are like judging right now because right away I know people are rolling their eyes like judging right now. Oh, you know, take all that aside and just think about that. That's kind of fascinating. Here's the drawback to that because mm. I thought about that for a second. I'm like, God, that's that is interesting. It's safe because they're in their own home, yeah, right? It's a camera. Here's the problem with that. If you ever, ever want to have a life that's not that in the future, or if you have kids or whatever, it's out in the fucking universe yeah, now. For, it's out in the forever. fucking internet. Someone's recorded you, and at some point, especially if you have kids, your son is going to go and he's going to look up vintage webcam porn. <laughs> and if you were good at any sense of the word, uh, you you may pop up and you will scar your child forever. Do you think so? <laughs> do you think you could do a good enough job of protecting that? I feel like you could. How? By cha- not having your name attached to it? It's it's your likeness is what I'm saying. The odds are, I mean, of course, the odds are that they won't find it, but it's out there. And here's the other thing. Here's what I think If I got that big, okay, if I got that big where, okay, let's just pretend right now. I do this in my my trailer in Kansas. (laughs) And I- It's all hypothetical. You haven't thought about this. Okay, I have a name that is just a total made-up name, Mm -hmm. okay? Right. um, and Dazzle then, and Dave, and I get I get so big that you could somehow connect. Like you know, now that I moved to California because I'm filthy rich and I'm overdoing that, and now I decide I'm going to work a nine to five job. That I got so big that my nine to five job could research and somehow find me and attach that. No, to me. I'm not worried about that. But think about it. so for me personally, I, this is one of the, here's one of the reasons why I would never do it. Is <laughs> what if I did webcam porn? It's out there. I made a little bit of money. Now I take that money and now I invest it or whatever to become truly successful. And then let's say I make it. Let's say I get big, like, oh, you know, found CEO and founder of so-and-so company, Sal Stefano, And then some fucking internet reporter or whatever is going to find, you know, old video of me. And then it pops up like, oh my God, there's an old <laughs> sex video of Sal freaking jerking off on a webcam or whatever. <laughs> Ruins your life. I see. Or I, it makes you more popular. I was going to say, I feel like it's all about how you respond to it. I think I, I know, could, o- I, I think I could own it. Yeah, that, I think I could own it and be okay with. It. Are think, you covering your back? Of course, I got those a videos real already, answer. Yeah. Those videos already exist. Yeah, because there's 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 dick pics of me all over the place somewhere. No, that's not why. I just think that you. It's so hard because we we judge right away with something like that. But if the the girl or the guy in the situation is a complete virgin, you, your name's not attached to you. You find a way to make a business for. Like, who am I to judge all the people that want to pay fifty something bucks a month just to watch you whack yeah. off or do whatever you're doing? Oh, and, I don't judge. Do your own thing. And then, but and it's it, out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would, I, th- I sweat over some of the what, shit I posted you, on where, Facebook. Where it would suck. Okay, here's the thing. This well, is where it would suck. You're at the library, and then like some dude's like, hey, you're Vinny the Virgin. Did you uh, pick library for a reason? Is there a reason why you said no, that? No, not okay. at all. Okay, so no. I just think that here's where it would suck, and the only way it would suck, which is, I'm not afraid of this because this is not how I approach anything in life, is if I was okay at it, not very good. <laughs> if you were like <laughs> not- like, oh, I saw like your The sex, mediocre yeah, yeah, masturbator. Yeah, like, where I didn't make very much money doing it. Like if I'm going to do it, I'm going to be fucking great at it. <laughs> I'm going to be probably one of the best that yeah. ever did that. Dude, so how, so how, then I'd be proud of it. Talk like, about a shot mm, to the ego. If you totally. finally you finally make the decision, you're like, okay, 
That's it. I'm, gonna do I'm doing webcam porn. <laughs> and you make yeah. and you and you, you don't make, make like, any money. You make like three hundred dollars. No subscribers. Month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody nobody wants to pay you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like six people. Oh, your ego would be destroyed. Uh, yeah. Right? Well, that so that's that's just it. I, if I'm going in, I'm going in. I'm going yeah. all the way, and I'm going to be great at this. Like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do my homework. I'm gonna see it's how a lot of hardcore okay. stuff you'd have to do on the webcam. Maybe so. It's a valid option. Maybe. First of all, you're a man, so your audience is going to be other men because uh, women don't really pay for that shit. Um, and I don't know. I feel like we have a couple people that would pay for that. Not a lot, no. and uh, they want to see the hardcore stuff. They don't want to just see like <laughs> oh, I'm in my you know. Yeah, you're gonna have to. How do you know? <laughs> how do you know? Go. Look at porn. Like m- porn happens. sites are yeah. all. It's porn different. sites so, are uh, all hardcore. I would go in and change the game. I would go in and maybe tell a story. Maybe have oh. some. Maybe have a little bit of yeah, comedy you, in there. You do your motivational you, speaking. Yes, before, maybe exactly. Maybe, maybe I, you're just cleaning stuff. Maybe I give you. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I give you some like leadership advice, and then I transition yeah. into yeah. masturbation. Maybe there's like you're, you're cooking. Maybe yeah. there's costumes that I wear. Yeah. Maybe there's some different stuff that I do. Maybe I. Maybe I integrate. Did you write out a business plan. <laughs> <laughs> I might have. Have one, uh, <laughs> but I really. What would, you, what would your webcam name be? I don't know. I haven't thought about that far. Huh? I haven't mm-hmm. thought about that far. Come what on, would you man. name me? Huh? What would I name you? Yeah. I'm not gonna fucking give you. A, well, I, f- I don't know. Well, I feel like you'd be a subscriber. So, what would you name me? <laughs> Adam would, Anal. Yeah. Oh my god. I don't know. <laughs> I was. That does not. Suck. I would subscribe so Oops. I could save the videos. That doesn't sound. That doesn't sound good at, at no, all. Bring, bring uh, the next question. Doug. No, no hey, you guys fucking skip right past me. You <laughs> fucking I did not. assholes. He did, bro. Oh, I sorry. Get, Damn, you guys are oh, horrible sorry. at this. Such a sorry, piece Justin. of shit, yeah, dude. Assholes. Sorry, Justin. What it's would you fine. do, Justin? Me, I'd like to express my my artistic side more. So I he's been waiting to answer so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I led Adam astray because I was like, "Hey, porn," and then he just went really deep with that uh, <laughs> idea, which is great. I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I I honestly like I I would love to um I w- I would have loved to learn how to. Uh, draw or like do more stuff like graphically because I'm so drawn to it anyways and uh, like being like a a, a video game type um, artist or something like that where I'm like involved with the creative process so something along those lines and then like or like film so uh, I I definitely very much more motivated by creativity and like doing creative things so if anything opposite of this would have to be like more along those lines so that's it man go what ahead stu- next next one what a stupid cool. job yeah <laughs> it, that's awesome <laughs> boring fuck All you guys right. our next one is from smash ballard what are your thoughts on test boosters how do they work are they effective and are there better alternatives good question this is a good question so uh from a studies standpoint what do the studies actually say on test boosters. Who got you Ted Baker socks? What do you mean? When did you get those? Oh, my socks? Those are nice. I thought I, f- I found them in your suitcase. <laughs> you yeah. do those are nice socks. I've had these for a while. Oh. Um, um, thank you. So you might want to take, why don't you take a picture of that, post it on your Instagram. I so will. People know what they show, look like. show people what's up. So um, test boosters, there are some out there that actually do boost testosterone, but there's a big uh, asterisk after that. Well, what kind, right? Which is... Which is this, testosterone boosting herbs in particular work if you have low testosterone. If you take them and you have normal healthy levels of testosterone, they don't do much at all. So I'll give you an example of an adaptogenic herb that has consistently demonstrated to have some pretty awesome balancing effects when it comes to hormones. It's uh, one of them called Tong Cat uh, Ali. Or, um, God, what is the Uricoma longfolia, I think is uh, the scientific name for it. And what this plant actually does, it's considered an adaptogen, meaning if your body is in a stress state, uh, adaptogens will help your body deal with stress and balance you out. So if your cortisol levels are real high, it'll bring the cortisol down. If your cortisol levels are normal, it won't touch cortisol. If your hormones are off or not optimal, They'll bring them up into optimal ranges. So if you're a man with, let's say, you're measuring your testosterone at 150, you know, uh, what, are they, what are they? What are they? Deciliters uh, or de- whatever. Yeah, per nanogram per deciliter or whatever. Um, it'll it'll raise it to more of a healthy normal range. But if you already have healthy normal levels of, levels of testosterone, you don't get any benefit. So I know a lot of guys, a lot of people, 
uh, or supplement companies, I, I should say, advertise uh, Tonkat Ali as a test booster, but in reality, only if your test is low does it really do much. Now, there is one uh, supplement that will raise testosterone regardless of your current testosterone levels, but it's very short-lived, and it also raises uh, female hormones in men. So you will notice that you, you will get rises in estradiol or estrogen. Um, and that's deaspartic acid. Deaspartic acid in men will raise testosterone uh, for about 10 to 14 days. After that, it goes right back down to normal. So are you going to get any muscle boost from that or anything like that? Nope. I mean, it's too short. doesn't do much. And raise your normal healthy levels of testosterone by 30%, which sounds like a lot. And you're not raising it enough really to notice major gains. I mean, even when people take anabolic steroids... They're not taking 30% more than their normal levels of testosterone. They're tripling or quadrupling or more of what normal testosterone will be before they notice uh, muscle gaining effects. So this is this is a woman asking, by the way, too. Okay. Yeah. So what? I know I made the I made the smart ass. I just now looked her up. So here's what she I made a smart ass comment about taking steroids. I wouldn't recommend that. So, so here's an interesting <laughs> I just thing. Put that, I just by put the that way, out. low testosterone in women is bad too. Women have a little bit of testosterone, not nearly as much as men do, but low testosterone in women. Uh, causes the uh, similar effects that low testosterone men will cause: low motivation, low confidence, low sex drive, uh, low energy. So, uh, in women, um, you know, when you go get hormone profiles done, or you think your hormones are off, sometimes test your testosterone levels too. If they're low, you won't feel very good. And adaptogenic herbs in women also have these kind of balancing effects. Another adaptogenic herb that I really, really like using for myself when I'm stressed out or I'll recommend to clients sometimes um, is ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is another herb that tends to balance people out. Now, here's the thing. Here's the cool thing about plants. This is why I like plants so much so much as supplements. Two reasons. Number one, there are active, uh, what we like to consider active components in these herbs, you know, where scientists will say, well, what is causing most of the effects of this particular plant? And they'll find like in ginseng, like what's in ginseng that's giving it adaptogenic effects for some people. And they'll find gin, uh, ginsinocides, I think they call them, which are these specific chemicals. And then, of course, what supplement companies do is they standardize and extract just those and say, here, here's what you're going to take. Not a good thing because herbs have this natural balancing effect and there's this entourage effect of uh, all these different components in the plant that seem to work better together together. Then when they're isolated, they have this, this more balancing effect. Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine use herbs quite a bit in their treatments, but they never recommend herbs all the time. Same thing with adaptogens. Like I'm not, I never recommend someone take you know, an herb all the time. I recommend if you take an adaptogen, take it when you're feeling under high levels of stress. Maybe it's you know, life circumstances. Maybe you, know, you have a young child, so you're not getting much sleep. Maybe your diet has been really off because you've been traveling, you know, or you just feel really crappy and you know you're off balance. That's those are good things to take at those moments, but I don't think they're good to take like all the time, or at least if you do, take them in very very low doses. So that's how I would use you know test boosters, quote unquote test boosters as, as supplements. How about you guys? <laughs> well, mm. I think you I have pretty, no comment. Yeah, I think you. <laughs> do you guys have experience with well, test boosters? I do, all? I do, and I and here I'm not a big fan. Yeah, I, I, I don't recommend any. Well, and of that like shit. you said, I, as far if you're going to take things, uh, I would go the natural route. Um, actual the actual test boosters that I messed with when I was a kid had more adverse effects than anything to me. Mm. So I remember I got my first uh, you know flare up of gynomastia from uh, a over the counter supplement that was, you know, called trend, trend something. I can't trend X or trend mm. something when that was popular. And it later on got pulled off the shelves. Uh, but messing with testosterone like that, uh, and I made the joke about just go take te steroids and I'm kidding about that. But I do want to point out that I wish that I have, I had done more of my homework on the difference between all these over the counter test boosters versus real testosterone synthetic that you could get prescribed and what that was like. And I wish I, I knew what I know now. And what I know now is that we don't have a lot of studies around a lot of the shit that you get at the store at, at your local supplement. Plus it's all the rejected 
you know, compounds that for the most part that are going to give you all the side effects and all that shit. You yes. Know? If you're going to mess with your hormone levels, okay, if you're going to mess with your hormone levels, I'd much rather do it by getting my blood work and then looking, having a doctor take, take a look at it and then and tell me. And it sounds so crazy because it's like, oh, you have to take an injection from, you know, a synthetic needle. Oh, you have to take a needle. But in see, your, that's, a, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm talking about with herbs. You're not going to get a boost if your testosterone is normal. You may get a boost if it's low, and that's why that's one of the things I love about uh, you know some of these Eastern uh, you know uh, philosophies of medicine is that it's all about balancing you out, and the plants work that way. So when you look, cannabis is a great example, by the way. I don't know if cannabis would be considered an adaptogen, but cannabis is one of those things where uh, for the immune system, for example, if you have an overactive immune system where you have autoimmune issues, it will actually help control it and balance it out. But if you have an immune system that's underactive, like you have cancer or HIV, cannabis has been shown to strengthen the immune system. And that's why I like whole plants so much. And it's not true for all plants, but when you use herbal supplements and you use them in the right, right way, it's not like boosting you into this like superhuman level. It just helps optimize your body along similar lines and nowhere near as effective as eating properly and exercising right. Well, as I say, eating properly, exercise, sleep, lowering your stress, meditation, all these things I think will do more for your testosterone and um, boosting your hormones, I think, more than any herb or any, any supplement on the market. And now- if you were somebody who was like me, who was in the search of, I want more, te- I want as much testosterone as I get, then that to me is the is synthetic uh, testosterone, is going that direction. And that's where you have to ask yourself, is that something I really want to do to my body? And you have to be okay with it. But to think that because it's at a store and it's sold over the counter, that this stuff could be okay for me. It's not. It's not okay. We don't know very much about it. If I'm going to take the risk to mess with my hormones, I'm going to take testosterone. I'm going to take the real thing and I'm going to monitor my blood and I'm going to check that. To me, if I want that extra bit of testosterone that bad, that's the route that I normally tell someone to go instead of being like the kid that I was, which was trying every fucking thing under the sun that said testosterone uh, attached to it. Like I wanted to see if it was going to make me feel more anabolic when I worked out. And in reality, if I would have just ate better, cleaner, rested, meditated, slept better, you know, worked out, didn't overtrain, all those things would have kept my hormone levels uh, as optimal as they possibly could be naturally. And then if then I still wanted to get crazy and I wanted to be anabolic, you know, and take take these levels to a whole new level, I would go and do the real thing instead of actually going over the counter and trying all these pills that are not regulated. Now, one thing, another thing that I want to uh, talk about on this particular topic, which is kind of interesting, is when you go get your testosterone levels checked, they typically will test total testosterone. Now, that's a little bit um, misleading because total testosterone uh, is not giving you uh, uh, the free testosterone number. And what I mean by that is if your testosterone levels are you know, on the normal high side, let's say you're, you're measuring it like 700 or 800, which is good, good, good testosterone reading, but most of it is being bound, then it's unusable. So you can have great testosterone levels, but it can be bound and unusable by the body, which basically means you have low testosterone. And you'll find this sometimes where a man will go get tested. He's got all the symptoms of low testosterone. Goes to the doctor, they test total testosterone. And they're like, no, your testosterone levels are fine. He's like, oh, why do I feel like shit? Then he'll, you know, through just being frustrated through, you know, trying to figure this out, he'll go to somebody who's a little bit better at testing and then they'll test free testosterone. And they'll be like, okay, here's why you have symptoms of low testosterone. You have high levels of SHB, I think it's SHBG, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, sex, uh, sex, what is it, sex hormone binding globulin. Um, now, yeah, the, there, it. The, it, and what it does is it binds to testosterone and makes it, uh, renders it basically useless. Now, if in terms of, you know, uh, some of the androgenic effects of testosterone. Now, um, there is an herb that you can take that will reduce. Uh, this particular sex binding um, 
uh, hormone and will increase free testosterone uh, if you have high levels of, uh, of uh, SHBG, and that's fenugreek. So if you have uh, symptoms of low testosterone, something else you may want to try that doesn't raise testosterone but will free up testosterone is fenugreek. You could buy fenugreek tea or you could take fenugreek um, in its whole natural herbal form uh, in pills. And uh, some men will notice like, wow, I feel like my testosterone levels went up um, or I feel better. And it's just because it freed up a lot of testosterone. So with that being said, 30 days of coaching Still available and still absolutely free. You go to mindpumpmedia.com. You just opt in. You get hooked up. We give you tons of information and it's still free. Also, if you want to ask us a question that we may answer on one of these episodes, the place to do it is on Instagram. You find us at mindpumpmedia. Lastly, we each have our own personal pages on Instagram. Each one has its own flavor. We present information on our pages that you don't hear on the podcast. My page is mindpumpsal. Adam is Mind Pump Adam, and Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump. Mind Pump.